Okay, let's do this basic trigonometry problem. And a lot of what you do in trigonometry, at least on your test and quizzes and homework, uh, you're going to be asked to do a lot of these problems without the aid of a calculator. So here is the problem. Uh, the cosine of what angle in degrees is equal to one half? Okay, so what is this angle? I have some angle when I take the cosine of it in degrees, it's equal to one half. So you need to be able to find uh, the answer to a question like this if you are in any kind of trigonometry class. And uh, again, of course, we can use our calculator. Matter of fact, some of you may be confused on how to find the answer with this, uh, with our calculator. I'll talk about how to use our calculator uh, to do this, but uh, really, again, uh, if you um, are studying trigonometry and you're like, whoa, I can't use my calculator, well, guess what? Probably about um, half of what you do in trigonometry, at least in terms of your tests and quizzes, uh, you most teachers and most uh, courses will separate out where you have no calculator section. So yes, you have to get very good with working without your calculator and trigonometry. And of course, I'm gonna review all of this now. Of course, if you know the answer to this, don't use your calculator. Uh, but if you know the answer to this, put that in the comment section and we'll compare notes here in a second. Again, I want to know what angle in degrees has a cosine of one half. Okay, so I'm going to get into all this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But uh, if you are frustrated with math, maybe you don't feel like you're getting enough math instruction or clear enough math instruction. Maybe you don't click with your teacher's teaching style. Whatever the case might be, I've been teaching math for decades and I really break things down uh, in very small components that are clear and understandable so any student can be successful in mathematics. So if you're at the middle school, high school, even college level in terms of math, I can help you pass your and excel in your respective math courses. Now, if you are preparing for any test that has a math section, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Acuplace, or Alex exam, CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam, maybe nursing school entrance, nursing school entrance exam. Uh, you get the idea. There's a ton of exams out there that uh, have a math section that can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you are a homeschooler, I have a fantastic, very comprehensive homeschool math program. And uh, if you don't have any math notes, don't just um, don't panic just yet. You certainly need to take your own math notes, but I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. But if you want great grades in math, you must take great math notes. Okay, this is non-negotiable. But uh, let's go ahead and get into this problem. Again, if you know the answer to this, go ahead and put that in uh, the comment section. But let's go ahead and review how to do this without a calculator. And I'll show you how to answer the same question uh, with a calculator as well. All right, but uh, what, do, uh, what do I have here? Well, hopefully this looks familiar to you. This is our little mnemonic, our little uh, memory aid to remember our basic trigonometric uh, functions, okay? These trigonometric ratios, we call them. So the first one is uh, sine, but we remember this, well, let me just lay this out here for you. This is sine, this is cosine, this is tangent, but the phrase is so katoa, all right? Everyone hears that. Uh, most of you have been taught this basic type of phrase or some other mnemonic, but this is probably the most classic phrase. Pretty sure your your grandparents even learned this. So katoa. What does that stand for? Well, uh, let's talk. Let's take a look at sine. Okay, so the sine is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. So some the sine of some angle. We'll put in angle x. I kind of left out the x there just so we can just focus on uh, breaking this down. So the sine of some angle is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine is going to be the, so you, when we say so ka, you got to get that a in there. So that's going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And then tangent is toa, which is the opposite over the adjacent. Okay, so this is a little memory aid, uh, but this doesn't make sense unless we have our little right triangle. Okay, so here is our angle x degrees. So what is the uh, um, hypotenuse? Well, the hypotenuse is always the longest uh, side in a right triangle because that's pretty easy. Our H will here will always be the longest side. Now, what is the O and the H? Well, the H or sorry, the, uh, the A is the adjacent side. It's going to be the, the side of the triangle that actually touches or helps form that angle. Okay. So you can see how the adjacent side is actually connecting with the angle. And then the opposite side is the, is the side that's opposite of the angle. 
Okay, so here would be O, this would be A, and this would be H. Now, in any particular right triangle, the O and A, it could be, um, you know, in different locations. It all depends on what angle, you know, if I'm looking at this angle right here, let's say angle uh, Y, then this A would actually be the opposite, okay, and O would actually be the adjacent. So it all depends on what perspective, what angle you're looking at it. So when you're studying it, um, when you build out your, your little triangle, reference triangle, you really have to think about it. Okay, which one is my adjacent? Which one's my opposite? And then obviously the hypotenuse should be pretty clear. So this should be pretty um, uh, pretty basic stuff to you. Hopefully this is review. But we're interested again in knowing what the uh, the cosine, what, uh, what angle is equal to one half. Okay, so here in this specific problem, we're going to be looking in at the cosine of some angle x is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at actually uh, how we actually solve this problem. All right, so the cosine of some angle in degrees is equal to one half. So the cosine by definition is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and we know that the adjacent, okay, this is one half, so the adjacent must be uh, one and the hypotenuse must be two. Okay, so this is how we we kind of start uh, building out a reference triangle. We're like, okay, we know that the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the cosine of this angle is equal to one half. That means the adjacent uh, side is one. Okay, its length is one, and the hypotenuse is two. So what we have to do is build a nice little right triangle here. And we put our angle right there, and we're saying, okay, here is our adjacent side. It's 1. Here is our hypotenuse. It's 2. Okay, remember, the hypotenuse is always the longest uh, angle in a right triangle. And then the, this is the adjacent side. It's going to be 1. So try to make your, um, you know, your little right triangle, your reference triangle, as accurate as possible, or at least somewhat you know, in scale. So when you look at this, how can we now answer this question? Well, you're not going to be able to answer this question unless you don't know uh, something about uh, special right triangles. Okay, and I'm going to give you the two you need to know about. You need to know about the 30, 60, 90 special right triangles and the 45, 45, 90 special right triangles. Okay, these are the two that come up all the time in trigonometry. And hopefully you recognize this as a 60 degree angle. Now, this side right here happens to be Whatever this is, this is 1. It's going to be 1 times the square root of 3. Okay, so that's what this side is. We don't really need to know that uh, in this particular uh, problem. But you need to know that when you have a 1, 2, and then 1 square root of 3 uh, right triangle like this, that this side right here, this angle, is 60 degrees. Okay, so what is the angle that has a cosine of 60 degrees? I'm sorry, uh, what angle has um, its cosine equal to one half? Well, it's the cosine of 60 degrees. That's equal to 0.5 or one half. So if you don't believe me, put your calculator in degree mode and type in uh, the cosine of 60 and you'll see it comes out as 0.5. Okay, so hopefully you understand uh, uh, the basics of this. Again, in trigonometry, you're going to have to use these special right triangles. You have to be a total master at the 30, 60, 90 uh, uh, special right triangle and 45, 45, 90. Now, I've done additional videos on this. Of course, I teach this thoroughly in my geometry and uh, particularly in my pre-calculus course where I really get into heavy-duty trigonometry. But if you expect to do well in these proms, again, you're going to have to really be able to recognize uh, these uh, special right triangles and the respective angles within those right angles. Okay, this is used tremendously in trigonometry. But let's talk real quick about how to use our calculator here. So we have the cosine of some angle is equal to one half. So how can we use our calculator? Well, we can go in and use the arc cosine. Okay, we can use this function. And then we can put in one half and then hit enter and you'll get 60 degrees. Remember, make sure your calculator is in degree mode. You also have another mode called radians. And when you're learning trigonometry, you oftentimes work in radians and then you, um, you know, you'll go back and forth between degrees and radians, those modes. But a lot of students, they'll make a mistake, especially on test and very, very common. They'll do something to radians because the problem calls for radians, and then they'll forget to switch back into degree mode. So 
you know, if you're, uh, you can do the same problem and get your uh, answer in radians. But if they, if the question's asking you specifically what angle in degrees, well, then you're going to have to be in degree mode. Okay, so that is uh, the problem that uh, this particular problem I'm going to, um, you know, uh, kind of stop it at this point. But there's a lot to know in trigonometry. But if you understood all of this, then that's very, very good. Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and give you a little happy face with a good old 1983 Mohawk and an A plus and a 100%. I'm glad I don't see this haircut around anymore. Um, you, know, but, you know, a lot of people wore that back in the day. Uh, just took too much hairspray and it's not good, for, I'm sure, for the atmosphere. But uh, anyways, I thought it was pretty cool back in those days. I didn't have one. I did sport a nice little flat top. But anyways, hey, you're pretty cool if you got this right. Even if you didn't get this right, the fact that you watch this video, hopefully you understand. Next time, I'm sure, I'm sure you will do a lot better on a question like this. But this is basic trigonometry, and you're certainly going to have to be able to handle uh, these type of problems and much, much uh, more challenging problems as well. But if this little uh, video helped you out, go ahead and consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, uh, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. I have over a thousand plus math videos, basic math to advanced math. I'm talking arithmetic up to calculus and everything else in between. But again, my whole focus is to try to teach math in a um, super clear and understandable way so everybody can be successful in mathematics. So, um, Please take advantage of all the videos that I've posted and all the videos I will post, but my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.